Hey there viewers, and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got this 2009 Nissan Frontier pickup. It's got the four banger in it. It's fresh off the hook. It just got towed in. Uh, apparently the guy was driving down the road and he just, well the only description he gave me is that it's got bad gas or it runs like it has bad fuel. Um, needless to say, I just had a, you know, the tow company leave it out here. I went out and started it up. It starts and idles fine, but you cannot give it any throttle. Uh, if you start to rev it up, it coughs and chokes and spits and sputters and, you know, very well may be, you know, a fuel pump failing. And that's what we have to check out. Um, but it has those symptoms. So, and he said it just happened suddenly. So that's plausible. It hasn't been having any issues with it up until then. So I got our... I'll tell module plugged in there. I got the tool turning on. We're going to grab that, see if we can get some data, maybe get some codes, maybe get some direction, and then uh, see where our information leads us. Whoa, hang on there, little fella. Let me show you guys how this little guy runs. It's got 101 on the clock. Like I say, it starts and idles good. Sounds good. We've got a blinking TPMS light. I diagnosed that from a while back. It's got a couple bad sensors. Uh, right now the engine's still cold, and we're idling, I don't know, 1200, something like that. I'm going to give it some throttle. Oh. That's all the way to the floor. Let me show you. So we bring it up slow, light throttle, get about almost 2,000, it starts shaking, and I start giving it more throttle, that's all the way to the floor. Alright, so that's what our symptoms are. Uh, no money light, check engine light's not on. I just popped in OBD2 here, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit quicker to get loaded up. Uh, let's see here. So we do have some pending codes. We have a 303 cylinder 3 misfire and a random cylinder misfire. Um, sitting here at an idle, I guess I would say I don't feel a single cylinder miss. I'm uh, not super concerned with that. Pop in some data. Let's see here. We've got it on the metric system currently. switch that uh, I gotta switch that over I'm not good with my centigrade I should probably just learn the metric system <laughs> for conversions now uh, let's see so we're in closed loop about 170 degrees fuel trims are about zero so that's good there's something rattling underneath the truck something like a clamp on the exhaust or something our mass airflow uh, I seen that in grams per second. I was running around four. I don't know what size this engine is, liter wise. Some O2 sensors. Just seeing if any, there's any real anomaly here. So we got an AFR sensor on the uh, upstream. I think on Nissans they run like 1.5 to 1.55 volts, somewhere right in that area. Barrel pressure looks good. See load. So that's pretty interesting. Um, let's just take, let's grab some O2 data here. <clears throat> See which one did I just get? Vance Bank 1 sensor one. Grab our equivalency ratio. It's bank 1 sensor 2. We'll grab our fuel trims. We can kind of see what the heck this thing is doing when we're giving her a little toot on the throttle. There I go past them. There we go. Short. No, that's bank two. I want a thunder. I must be blind here. Absolutely. Blah, blah, blah. Am, I, am I missing my field trims, people? Hello, command, O2 sensor, equivalency ratio, short-term bank one sensor two. I don't want that. Ah, you gotta keep scrolling, you big dummy. How did, how did I mess that up? That's live on camera too. 
Can't make that crap up. Okay. So just for poop and laughter, let's uh, see what our fuel trim does. And it's very light on the throttle. That's pretty interesting. <clears throat> well, I'm telling if you guys can see. Let me, uh, so you can see our RPMs. I'm just very lightly tipping into the throttle. Just starting to get a bad misfire there. Go a little more. Our fuel trim starts to go the other way. And that's all the way to the floor. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> let's, uh, Get a closer look at what's going on here. Starts going super rich. Uh, you know what? Um, <clears throat> so I'm watching this front AFR, watching our rear O2. Um, we are not running out of fuel. Uh, it goes right rich at full throttle. Oops, it didn't like that little guy. Let's see if I can start it. Hopefully, it starts. All right, it did start. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we are not uh, we are not running out of fuel. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you what I think it is. And it's kind of odd that it would just randomly happen. Is based on data. I am suspecting a plugged exhaust. Um, I definitely don't feel that it's uh, fuel related. And honestly, that's what I thought we were going to see. <clears throat> Let's, uh, let's pop back out of this. Let's uh, go have a little visual inspection under the hood. So I take a little peek under the hood. Um, you know, I just checked, uh, you know, just visual inspection. I don't see anything, you know, out of the ordinary. I'm still going with my, uh, going with my gut and some of the data on this. I think the easiest way to do an exhaust back pressure test, I think we're gonna pull out that spark plug. I was looking uh, at this AFR sensor down there in the exhaust. So there's a converter. Uh, most the most likely item to plug up um, Not sure I you know, I really don't want to mess with that AFR if we don't have to uh, they're quite expensive Hate to take a chance of breaking it or you know having to strip out threads or you know something silly if we can just you know pull the uh, In or yeah pull an in cylinder waveform on it. See what the exhaust looks like uh, see if there is excessive pressure uh, Which boy it sure is uh, what it acts like to me Take <clears throat> it's kind of dark under this hood, it seems. Pull this coil out. <clears throat> right over here where you can see what the thunder's happening. There we go. cover on this truck for this guy way back way back when back side of these spark plugs 9 16 grab the 5 8 let's see here maybe a 9 16 spark plug Well, they are 9 16ths. That'll be dang. We'll spark plug to 5 8 Like I said, I did a valve cover a while back for this guy. The uh, spark plug wells were like filled to the top with oil and it was all running down the side of the engine. Uh, the only way that you could buy the spark plug tube seals 
supposed to buy the entire valve cover. So it's kind of silly. Um, the spark plug's a little toasty. So there's our spark plug. It is not your standard thread. Uh, looks like probably like a 12 millimeter thread. We grab our Pico. We'll get her threaded in there. Uh, we'll just leave this uh, coil completely unplugged. It won't hurt anything. And we'll grab our in-cylinder waveform. Oh my God. So let's see if we can't get this threaded. Boy, the hose that comes with the uh, <clears throat> the WPS 500, man, it's a it's a hydraulic hose. This thing is super stiff. So sometimes getting it into some rear cylinders, you know, where you don't have the straight shot, can be quite a quite a challenge. We'll see. So we'll get that on there. <clears throat> We'll grab our WPS 500, stick that on there, hopefully it's charged up. It is, we're in range one, zoom one. All right, we're good to go. We'll grab the wire. Right, let's see if I can work around the camera here. Um, <clears throat> so we got our peak all hooked up. I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna select our probe. WPS 500, range one. We want range one. I can never remember the ranges. So range one is, uh, what do we got? Uh, minus 15 to 500 PSI. So that is range one. We do want range one. Select that. We're gonna have running compression. We're just gonna start right here. Uh, it's gonna give us a max of 200 PSI. Let's see, we're gonna go with We'll do a long recording. Capture this. We'll go about uh, two seconds per division. Let's go ahead and set up a trigger. Let's see here. We'll just. Um, All right. So now when we hit 22 psi. It's going to start recording our data. I'm going to go in there and start it up. I'm going to give it a couple throttle snaps and then we'll come out and take a peek at this. Uh, you guys will be able to see that. Everything should be cool. <laughs> huh, that's interesting. I don't know why it uh, didn't record the first time. We obviously got enough cylinder pressure. But just for... Uh, just for the heck of it. Just take and pause that. I don't know why that didn't uh, didn't record the first time. <laughs> I think we already got a problem right now there, lady. Where's our zero PSI mark? So let's see, where are we? There, there's one PSI, I mean, <laughs> even at an idle. Look at our, look at our exhaust. Our exhaust is running about 14 pounds of pressure. We're gonna let this little guy go alive. Let me go give her a few, a uh, little two ton throttle. full throttles I could get. What are we running for exhaust pressure? Around 30 PSI. Wow. Of course, you know, there's going to be a little restriction from trying to uh, overcome the exhaust valve, but that's that's pretty obscene. So I'd, I'd say we made the right call. Looks like the peak of the exhaust uh, at an idle is running around 20 PSI. And then our throttle snap you know, that exhaust has no place to go. That is super cool. So that sure beats taking out, uh, trying to get out a O2 sensor or anything like that. But you can see, you know, just kind of average exhaust peaks there. What are we running? 28.95 PSI. 
So that's really cool. So here's kind of a zoomed in view on that. This is the cylinder at an idle. I just threw up some cursors on there so we could see, you know, top dead center, bottom dead center. This is going to be our exhaust stroke. Pistons back at top dead center, uh, bottom dead center, intake valve closes, and then back into a compression stroke again. And you can even see at an idle, <clears throat> you know, from zero PSI, our bottom line, uh, to the average of our exhaust, the delta on that's 15.66 PSI at an idle. So that is enough to uh, call it, you know, to confirm uh, plugged or restricted exhaust. Uh, now, at this point, that we know what's going on with it, uh, we're going to have to get some uh, permission from the customer to tear into it and see, you know, see what it is, uh, you know, 90 percent of the time it is uh, simply the catalytic converter. It's kind of odd that, you know, the truck was running perfectly fine and just, you know, random it did this, but uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, waveform there sitting at an idle and, you know, pre pretty quick and easy diagnosis on this one. So threw it up on a lift, so there's one converter there, it comes right off the manifold. When we come down, we got another little guy there. So we need to figure out who's plugged up. Got the guys all zoomed in there, so yeah, there's one converter and the other one. I think it's gonna be our best bet. Uh, we'll shoot some temperatures here. So the inlet temperature on this one, looking about 450, it should be hotter on the back side. See, we're only 300 there. Yeah, so about 300 coming out, and you know, almost 500 going in. Doing on this little guy here, let's see. 278. About 278. Okay, so I don't think there's any restriction there. And then uh, you know, because we have such a vast temperature difference here, the truck's starting to warm up now. 227. And about 500. So uh, yeah, so 500 degrees on the front of that cat. I'm gonna call it. I don't think we need to tear it apart. I don't know if it's all part of that. I think it's a whole man inverter on this thing. Yikes, that's ugly. Probably not cheap, I'll tell you that, especially in New York. I know carb certified converters. Don't know. Oh yeah, you can't, you can't even hear anything. Yeah, if you restrict it, but otherwise, there is literally a little bit of steam coming out. You can see it starting to steam up the body there when I stick my hand in front of it. But there's there's hardly any gas coming out of this, out of the tailpipe. Exhaust gas, not, not raw gas. Well, let's put this on before somebody, before we pass out. So that's that, I think we made a proper diagnosis. It needs a front converter. To warm up now. Still got the big difference, so you know, 580, you know, 380. So, show's over, folks. Nothing more to do. Uh, I'm gonna call the front cat now. If you did not have an in cylinder pressure transducer uh, to do this in cylinder, the way the O2 sensors are configured on this, you could actually determine. Is it the front cat or the rear cat because of where they've put the O2 sensors? So that's really cool uh, because there's one in front of that rear cat down there. I believe that's probably the downstream for the upstream one. So it's kind of nice, it splits the system in half. And like I say, you know, for the purpose of testing, it's best, yeah, AFR sensors are spendy. You know, it's been in there since 09. If I can leave it alone, I will. Uh, spark plugs, on the other hand, typically come out easy as long as, you know, they're accessible like it was on this one. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to give this job or not. I'm going to have to look up that converter, get the engine family number, and abide by all New York State laws, uh, which kind of sucks because sometimes we get, like, some little junker cars in, and it's got, you know, California emissions, and we're obligated to sell, you know, a carb-certified converter, you know. It's a $25,000 fine. 500 for your first offense, 25,000 for your second offense if you get caught uh, in New York State installing a non-carb converter on a carb car. So, 
I guess where I was going with that is sometimes we get these cars in that are $1,500 cars that need a $2,000 converter. And that kind of sucks. So people used to just kind of sneak over the border in PA and then the EPA sort of clamping down on those guys and changed it so vehicles registered in the state of New York, they had to follow the laws. But I'm sure there's still a lot of back road shops that are, you know, doing whatever. But uh, these guys, you know, they monitor the parts stores and the sales and where these converters go. So, you know, I don't play the game. I just install, you know, what it needs. And in some cases, I guess ultimately what I was getting at is it forces you to buy OEM. You know, you have to have an OEM converter because that's the only one. You know, the aftermarket didn't pick up, you know, the carb certified line or the carb converter on this line, especially when it comes to like nanoverters, uh, which that's what this appears to be. It looks like header tubing that comes down into a... Uh, converter. So some guys call them catafolds or manaverters, you know, whatever. And I guess that's it. So we'll see. I mean, the truck's not drivable the way it is, unfortunately. Uh, you know, the days of wallering her out with a bar are long gone, at least in the shop, maybe at home. But, uh, you know, don't tell your friends or neighbors or the government. They'll come get you. Uh, if I get this job, I will maybe make a video on it. Uh, I already have a video very similar to this one. The only reason I started recording this is because I thought it was going to be fuel related. Uh, when I drove it in, I thought for sure, but I was wrong. Uh, so I do have another video on uh, in-cylinder pressure testing uh, to determine exhaust back pressure. It was pretty neat because that was on a supercharged uh, 3.8 Buick. And that little guy had like 50 pounds of back pressure because it was ramming it in there. And... Um, I'll put links to that. I'll put links to uh, the converter replacement. So that, in that video, if I remember right, we did the testing on it, and then we also replaced the converter and you know cut it apart and had a little look see on the inside. Uh, what has me concerned is that he said this was sudden. He was driving along. I was like, Pfft. so I don't know. Perhaps that converter had been in there, balled up and rattling around for a while. Uh, I have seen that, uh, but usually. Customers kind of complain about a rattling sound, uh, but this having that other rattling sound underneath, it may have gone ignored. Uh, one of the heat shields is down there, you know, wangle jangling around, and uh, you know, perhaps he's been hearing that and just kind of ignored it, but it's also had a converter in there rattling around, and what that'll do is it takes the catalyst material and it gets all busted up, and, and it will often make a, like a ball, you know, until it gets down to just about that size, you know, about the size of an orange, and then that sucker turns sideways and right in the pipe and that is it. Uh, because this is excessively plugged, uh, being the fact that we can't even rev it up. And you know, up until now, this is a daily driver. He's had no power complaints, no nothing. So I gotta believe that's what it is. Um, but then the other thing that makes me think, I'm just talking out loud, is that he's had no engine light on. You know, if this guy uh, is a you know, local customer, if the money light came on, he'd have been in. Uh, you know, he brought it in with a flash and TPMS not too long ago and uh, whatnot and what have you there. So pretty peculiar. I did check the oil in it, make sure it wasn't excessively over full or something ridiculous there. And that's all good, so maybe just a fluke, but uh, you always want to know, you know, why it went into meltdown mode. It's just like, you know, when you change an ECM, why did it go bad? You know, what, what killed that driver? And, uh, you know, kind of take it from there. So we'll wrap it up. Google Plus, Facebook, check us out there. Also, look us up on Patreon, too, if you want to support the SMA channel and you like what we do. We appreciate all the support we've been getting there. It's been a little overwhelming. It's been very nice, uh, you know, to see your guys' appreciation for what we do. And uh, we thank you for that and thoroughly enjoy that. And uh, we'll put it to good use for sure. And that's it, guys. Just remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.